Today, we will be talking about your axle's pinion angle and how it relates to your steering. I'm Clyde and this is Tommy. Welcome to the house! Cheers! So now that you've lifted your truck, Jeep, or whatever 4x4 you decided to throw all your hard-earned cash at... Mitsubishi Delica? Not ever. You might find yourself on the internet getting all kinds of expert advice on driveline angles. Hey Clyde, it says that if I don't point my pinion right at my transfer case, then I'm stupid and I'm gonna die. <laughs> no way. Die! Let me see. Who writes these posts? I'm going. I'm going. So, how do we stop driveline vibrations? Well, it differs with different applications. If it's a simple setup with a drive shaft and two U-joints, these two angles being as close to each other as possible at ride height is optimal. To make an adjustment, we can use these shims from BDS Suspension. They just slip between your leaf springs and your axle perch. There are already so many good in-depth videos about driveline angles we just kind of figured we'd link to a couple of them. They're down there in the description. So that's it, right? Wait, what if you have the vibration in the front? Up front, we have CV and a U-joint. Yeah, but make sure that you don't have any other worn out parts that could be causing it. Check your CV, U-joints, steering linkage, bearings, bushings, everything. If that's all good, then change your opinion angle. What I'm trying to say is, don't change your pinion angle. Oh! With a solid axle, your differential's mounted to the whole thing. Right! It's solid! So, when you change your pinion angle, you're changing the angle at your spindle. That's your caster. Yeah, no big deal, right? It's actually a really big deal. Having your caster set in the positive or right back position gives your steering linkage a resting pose, if you will, where you can drive in a straight line and not put any unnecessary stress on the steering components. Positive caster is also the reason why when you've finished making a turn, you can let go of the wheel and everything returns to center. What's a few degrees gonna do? Well, we only have about five degrees of caster. How much are you planning on moving it? Eight degrees. Man, that's gonna put us like way into the negative. Like our budget? <laughs> let's demonstrate this then. All right. You know that bike you got? Yeah. Yeah, let's chop it up for science purposes. Go suit up. Now here's a perfect example of positive caster in action. Notice how easy it is for Tommy to keep the wheel exactly where he wants it. Alright, let's change some angles. See how it goes this time. Yeah. Oh, no. Less caster definitely makes your ride a little bit more wobbly. But maybe we should go full retard like our internet advisors suggest. Oh, oh. Oh. 
not only does it not want to go straight, but because of this angle, it's putting a lot of strain on the steering arm. Oh, shaky. I think we proved the point, Tommy. <laughs> So what did we learn today? That your Kessa angle is really important. You might not have a driveline issue. And you can't trust the people on the internet. Tommy, we're on the internet. If you think that there's something that we missed, or you just think that we're dead wrong, express yourself. You know where to do it. Otherwise, we'll see in the next episode. Remember, we're only fixing shit that's actually broke. What do you guys want to see? Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button and subscribe! They're down there in the description. So that's it, right? Wait, what if you have a vibration in the front? Are you drunk? A little bit. <laughs>